What's up guys and welcome back to yet another benchmarking video with the Interlock P580. Now in today's video I'm going to be doing some video editing benchmarks with DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro. The Interlock P580 is in this lovely machine back there that has an AMD 8700G which is an 8 core 16 thread CPU paired up with 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM. We are going to be running in the Interlock P580 through these two applications and seeing how it performs when it comes to video editing tasks. First things first we jumped into DaVinci Resolve and the first thing that I recommend anyone to do whenever you have new hardware is to always jump into your software settings and preferences to make sure that it is utilizing your hardware. So I opened a timeline that is 4k. This is a 4k timeline at 30 fps and playback and scrubbing test was pretty much responsive though I did have to turn my playback to half the resolution because I have denoising on some of the footage and if you've used DaVinci Resolve and denoised footage you know that it's a pretty heavy task for your machine but everything on the timeline pretty much felt responsive cutting moving footage around and even just sound mixing everything was just nice and smooth so the interlock b580 is definitely usable in this department now jumping into the ai stuff that davinci can do now this ties back to the setting that is known as neural engine optimization basically it's just ai stuff so subtitles can be generated locally on your machine in davinci resolve without an internet connection and in this particular area the interlock b580 is usable as it is a tad bit slower not gonna lie the nvidia cards are faster at this in this specific task but it is or rather it does do the job pretty well so if you're on like a longer timeline and you know the increment or rather the slight increment in the time it takes to generate subtitles might be a concern for you then definitely you might want to stick with an nvidia card if you do work that mostly involves generating subtitles and jumping on to another ai related activity which is uh, magic mask it is a masking feature in davinci resolve and yeah magic mask was actually okay i was actually surprised how responsive it was it was pretty nice and fast and i think magic mask relies on the raw power of the gpu so the interlock before 80 is not it's not really it, it's a it's, it's a good card it's definitely a good card so i could definitely you know see and i'll actually argue and say that um the interlock before 80 when it comes to magic mask in davinci resolve might be faster than um the competition which is um amd and nvidia now jumping into the render settings um we do have let me talk first of all talk about codec support and in this department what i'm talking about is the video formats mp4 quicktime prores the good thing with the interlock before is we have access to av1 if one is like the, the the new codec that is supposed to be more efficient basically less data more quality so that is what av1 was designed for and it's pretty hard to encode av1 especially if you don't have the right hardware and fortunately because we're using the interlock before AT, we do have access to AV1 under MP4, and you should see the type of MP4. You'll see AV1 and the others H.264, H.265. And the final render time for this specific timeline is seven minutes. I think, yeah, seven minutes, 20 seconds there. So, pretty, pretty nice. So if we take a look at Premiere Pro, jumping into the settings and preferences, you can see we do have OpenCL, um, GPU acceleration set here, and uh, it's nice just to see that the Interlag B580 is supported by this software. Now the timeline is pretty much identical in that this is a 4K timeline, the same timeline that I was um, editing in DaVinci Resolve just you know, ported over to Premiere Pro. So playback, editing, just moving footage around the timeline was pretty much smooth. And I was playing the footage back at the full resolution. Now, of course, uh, Premiere Pro doesn't have an equivalent denoiser like DaVinci Resolve. So the task on the GPU 
was a bit lighter compared to the timeline being in DaVinci Resolve with the denoising. So yeah, the interlock visibility was just having an easy time here and it's pretty usable. So if you're looking for a GPU for Premiere Pro 4K timelines and all that stuff, then the Interlag B580 is nice. Now, Premiere Pro cannot generate subtitles locally. You have to pay for the Adobe subscription cloud thingy. So yeah, that's not something I was able to test. And even if I was able to test it, I mean, it doesn't run locally on your machine. So it's not a good indicator of performance from the Intel Arc B580. Now, jumping to the render settings, um, codec support is pretty much the same, though I did not see the option to encode everyone. So I don't know if, if you use Premiere Pro pro probably tell me if it supports it but for me i did not see that option and rendering the timeline of course because premiere pro cannot show me or rather does not say the time taken rendering a specific um, timeline i had to send the footage over to media encoder where our timeline took um our timeline took actually less time it took like four minutes to complete the entire render so that is pretty nice and actually quite fast but again remember davinci resolve has denoising so maybe that's why the davinci resolve timeline took a tad bit longer there okay so we've come to the end of the video now it's a pretty interesting video in that the intel arc b580 was actually very usable now other than the issues that i experienced which by the way i was able to solve by DDUing. So DDU is the software that allows you to completely uninstall the graphics drivers and audio drivers. So I did that. I disabled Fastboot and somehow that ended up magically fixing my problem. And I was actually even able to edit a video or rather another video later on the machine without any hiccups. Now the Interlag B580 is definitely usable. Be it, it might be... A bit. <laughs> it might be a little bit slow when it comes to like um, the AI subtitle generation, but for the most part, it's pretty good. It's pretty fast. It's pretty responsive. So it's definitely a good buy if you're looking for a GPU for video editing. And of course, it does have 12 gigs of VRAM. So that does come in handy with high resolution timelines. So tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one.